Hey everybody, happy Monday. I hope you're having a great week so far. We're off to a beautiful start here in Florida. We've got a wonderful sunny day outside. It's a little warmer than usual for April. Um, but we're in this, this season of new birth and new life and we're getting ready for Easter. So I'm going to continue with my series on refresh your, your spring, refresh yourself for spring. All different aspects of your life can be refreshed. And today I'm going to focus on refreshing habits. We all have a series of habits that get us through the day. And the reason that we focus so much on having habits is because it's easier to do habits. The mind doesn't have to think about it, so it frees up that mental space. The brain is designed to work on autopilot in a lot of the things that we do every day. So it's important to focus on what those habits are that you're doing on autopilot every day. And know that those are the healthiest things that you can do. The most beneficial things for you and for your environment and for all the people around you. So let's look at how to refresh your habits and optimize your life overall. So the only way that you're going to know what habits you're doing, because you tend to do them without thinking, is to journal your day. So take your day and break it up into little sections. The prep part of your day where you get ready in the morning, you're going to have habits that help you get through that part of your day, for example. And then the morning, whether that involves a commute or as you're getting settled to your desk at work or as you even get settled into your day at home if you're someone who works from home or works in your home as a stay-at-home mom. And then midday, you're going to have certain habits around that time of the day. And then an afternoon section would be there. An evening section is also a different time of the day. And the night section. And the reason I'm breaking it up into so many pieces is because if you have too big of a chunk, you're not going to really focus on it well enough to pull out all of your habits. So, for example, your day prep time, if you focus on that little chunk, you're more likely to pull out things like, I brush my teeth. I brush my hair, I do these things in the morning before I even head into uh, getting breakfast for myself and my family, grabbing my coffee, getting my sweet roll, if that's what you normally eat for breakfast, that might be a habit that you want to look at. Uh, so journaling your habits in each section of the day. And in those sections, focus on certain types of habits that you might not otherwise focus on. Like I said, this is all autopilot. Hey, Jennifer, it's so good to see you. I hope that you're doing well. I've been praying for you. Um, one thing I want to focus on is intake. So in the morning, day prep time, what are you taking in? Are you breathing shallow breaths? Because your breath is something that you take in. What are you breathing? Are you breathing good smells? Are you breathing deep breaths? Are you breathing in exhaust fumes from outside on the interstate? What are you breathing in? Uh, what are you drinking? Are you drinking only coffee? Not that there's anything wrong with coffee because we know that coffee is there because God loves those of us who aren't morning people. But too much coffee can dehydrate you. So are you only drinking coffee or are you also drinking enough water to offset the dehydrating effects coffee can have? Are you breathing? Are you eating good food? Food that's going to fuel your brain and get your body ready for the day in the morning. Are you not eating breakfast? Skipping breakfast is not going to help you lose weight. So making sure the things that you're intaking by habit are going to be the best things that you can do by habit because your habits can be changed if necessary. If you don't look at them, you won't realize you have habits that should be changed. And in addition to intake, look at your activity. What are the things that you're doing during that segment of time? Do you have hygiene things like brushing your teeth and your hair, washing your face or not washing your face? Um, are you doing exercise? Are you stretching in the morning to help you feel limber and focused during the day? Are you praying when you begin your day? That's an important activity, and that'll go into the, sec the next section that I'm going to talk about. Um, do you have chores that you do during the day? Is that filling that entire space of your day so that you're distracted from other things you could be doing? What are the things that you do to maintain yourself, others around you, and your environment? If you're a mom, you may be doing a lot of things for your kids first thing in the morning. Some of those things are habits that you've always done for them. And it's good to look at, are those habits they still need me to do for them? Or are they habits that they could learn to do themselves? Even though it takes me a little time on the front end to teach them, it's important for them to learn to individuate. So handing off some of those habits so you can build better habits into your own part of your day can teach them, 
and help free you up so you have time to do things like pray and help get better food into your body, take some time to stretch, maybe with them. You can teach them to stretch too in the morning and be healthy spiritually and physically in the morning. And the third area, of course, is spirituality and focus. What are you doing in each part of your day, not just morning and evening, to keep your focus, your thoughts, your attitudes, even your position, the things that you look at physically can help change your attitude and your focus. And we have habits on the things that we tend to look at. Do you tend to look down all the time? Do you tend to look out of a window? That can be a positive thing. It can help you focus on good things. Are you focused on scripture during the day? Do you have small little popcorn prayers that pop up throughout your day? Or do you only do it as a rote memorized prayer first thing in the morning and last thing in the day? It's important to keep that attitude of prayer throughout your day. Are you taking a moment when you get ready to eat your lunch to just say, God, come sit with me? How are we doing together today? It doesn't need to be a long prayer. It can be if you have the time. But if you don't, God is with you. Practicing enjoying his presence throughout the day is a great habit. And it needs to be a habit. And so in order to get it as a habit, we have to practice habits in order to make them something that comes naturally. So the focus, the attitudes, the thoughts, we may have automatic thoughts that interrupt our day. We may automatically be thinking negative thoughts about ourselves, about our work. What are the things that you constantly tell yourself during the day? If you don't jot those down in a journal, you won't realize that, hey, you know what, 50 times today, I thought to myself in my head, I'm stupid, I'm clumsy. If you have a habit of thinking those things in your head, getting those thoughts out of your head, those worry thoughts that can become a habit. It's a habit to worry. And it's not that it's a blame thing that you, you're to be blamed and shamed for, for having a habit of worrying, but recognizing it and changing that habit of worrying or putting yourself down into going, you know, there's my habit thought again, but I'm going to transition that to a new habit today. And today, God, I'm going to turn that thought over to you and I'm going to recognize you're bigger than my worry. I'm worried about this. You're with me in my, in my place where I'm at right now where I'm afraid. And you can lift me up. I'm, you're with me in these places where I feel inadequate and insufficient. But you fill me and you equip me. And together, we're never insufficient when it's the two of us, you and me, Jesus. So changing the thoughts that come up automatically by adding a positive thought that you're going to start putting with that negative thought. So they're not going to overpower all the little segments of your day. So journal those automatic thoughts that come in during your day. The things that you focus on. Keep scriptures in front of you. If you put post-it note scriptures on your computer, on your dashboard of your car, on your refrigerator, that'll give you something new to focus on during the day in your head and outside of your eyes because we are physical people and what we look at can be important. That's why in Philippians it tells us whatever is true, whatever is perfect and lovely, think on these things. We have to keep our mindset and our thoughts and our focus on the positive and that takes some doing and practice. Our world is not set up to help us focus on positives. We have to form that habit intentionally. It's not going to come naturally. So the fourth thing that I want you to journal, the fourth area each time during the day, connections and impact. What are your communications, your automatic ways of responding to people and yourself during those times of the day? How do you affect the other people in your environment? Do you have a habit of finding ways to encourage other people? Do you have a habit of smiling? Some people don't smile during the day and that affects your own mental and emotional well-being as well as that of the people that you're around all the time. It can affect how productive you are at work whether you're smiling or not. So pay attention just for a couple of days so you can journal it and be aware of it. Am I smiling? Is my body posture straight? There's a wonderful TED talk that discusses the power of our body posture. Uh, so how we position ourselves, whether we're closed off, whether we're open, whether we look strong and confident, that changes how we feel. So changing those habits of posture can be really important. I know I tend to slouch a lot when I'm at the computer and it affects 
how my neck and my shoulders are sore throughout the week. So I need to change that habit. I'm working on it. I'm aware of it. So the first thing to do is to know what is the problem. Today I ordered a mouse pad that's going to help me change my posture at the mouse at the computer. So hopefully I won't be in so much pain all week long. So connections and impact are even more important. How are you making soreness in your relationships with the people around you? Do you automatically roll your eyes at certain members of your family? Do you automatically take offense when someone is a little abrasive to you at work or at home or in church or in the community or wherever you happen to be? Is your automatic way of responding to them a certain kind of attitude? So pay attention to those things and see if you can change that habit. Could you, if you were intentional, do more at connecting to other people and yourself? Can you help yourself with the way that you speak to yourself during the day? And I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Your self-talk makes all the difference in how you feel and how you make other people feel around you. So tell yourself that you belong to a God who loves you. That you are important because He lives in you and He has something to do through you. Not because of anything you can or can't do on your own, but because He is with you and He has chosen you to be His vessel of certain spiritual gifts that He wants to deliver to other people. So you're important. You are important. And you're valuable to Him and you're valuable to the other people around you. So take a look at how you're connecting with people. Are you taking the time to talk at dinner? Are you taking the time to talk in the car about positive things? Are you taking the time to laugh with other people and have fun and, and make connections with them that are going to be memorable? So take those moments and make them change. Make the habits of the way that you tell jokes, that you encourage, that you hug, that you smile, and that you look in someone's eye instead of looking away. Uh, those kinds of things are habits, interactive way that you look at people, the way that you talk to people, the things that you say and whether you touch people or not are connective habits and paying attention to those is very important so that you can know how much you're impacting yourself, others and environment. So evaluate each section of the day and each part of that day's sections, intake, activity, spirituality and focus, and then the connections and impact to yourself, the environment and to other people. Are you keeping your environment clean on a daily basis? Are you taking care of other people in a way that helps them feel better because you are with them? Are you helping other people to be empowered, not enabled and dependent? Are you being good to yourself? Are you taking care of your body, your mind and your spirit? Only you can take the time to connect with God in your life. Nobody else can do that for you. That's the one thing that should be a very high priority because you can't delegate it. So some of the other things that you need to delegate, look at those habits. So only change a couple of habits in each section of the day per week because if you try to change too many things, you won't be successful. So changing it a little at a time and making changes that you want to live with. So it's a full lifestyle change that you intend to make permanent. Those things are what you want to change. And keep doing it. If you make a mistake one day, get back on it and do it right again. So it takes a little bit longer than three weeks. We used to think three weeks, but more like four to six weeks to make a habit of permanent lifestyle change. So stick with it and keep at your journal so that you're journaling that you've changed it and you can keep it effective. So that's all I have for you today on refreshing your habits. If you can refresh the little habits that carry you through your entire day, think about how your whole overall life would be transformed. So I hope that you're able to optimize your life from this. I'm so glad to see you here today and I hope that you have a blessed and wonderful week. Be encouraged.